Having a larger breast has its own unique challenges, especially when breastfeeding. Positioning, milk making, milk flow, and the storage capacity of your breast are all unique as you get into those larger cup sizes, F, G, H, and above. First, let's talk a little bit about positioning. Having a larger breast gives you lots of advantages for positioning, especially in side lying, because you have more room for your breast to be able to lay on the bed next to you to give you more play of your angles on the bed. I do often find that when you have a larger breast, football position is much easier. When you're in the standard cradle or cross cradle holds, it can be very difficult to see your baby's nose when you have a larger breast. Many larger breasted women also complain that they feel like they're suffocating their baby. By putting your baby into football hold, turning them this way, you can play around with the angle of your breast. Your baby can snuggle up under that breast and give it a natural lift from their body. It's often much easier to look straight down at your baby's nose. When you have a larger breast where you have more movement of the breast, you can have baby in a traditional side lying football hold or you can actually tuck them up in under your breast where they're coming from underneath and you have a little more play. You do wanna make sure that your baby is tucked nice and far back and that their head is slightly extended as they're coming to the breast. You're physically using your baby to help pillow up that breast and give it a little bit of structure and substance. If you still feel like your baby's not comfortable in latching because your breast is larger, you can take a towel roll a washcloth, a baby burp cloth, a swaddling blanket, roll it up and tuck it up under that breast to give you a natural breast lift to help pillow it up for the baby to latch easier. Again, that side lying position can be super helpful. Now, when we're actually talking about making milk, we want to remember that milk is made at the back of the breast. So when you have a physically larger breast, your milk has to travel much farther to get to your baby than when you have a shallower or smaller breast. Start by doing lots of massage of that breast. Do some rolls. Use a breast massager vibration to help get that milk to start flowing. It's the difference between a short straw and a long straw, especially a long curly straw that we all like to drink out of, right? You have to physically drink more to start that flow going. So remember that for your baby, especially when they're tiny and just learning to breastfeed. It is going to take a lot more sucking for them to activate and pull, start that flow of milk to pull down. Now we know that breast size does not indicate milk production. You can have a small breast and make just as much milk as a large breast. But when you have a larger breast, you physically have the potential to more storage capacity, meaning your breast can physically hold more milk at any given time. Some of those parents can go much longer between feedings and not feel uncomfortable or feel a drop in their supply. It again depends on how much that breast is making. I've seen some very large breasts only make one, two, or three ounces per feeding. Normal. I've also seen some very large breasts be able to hold four, five, or six ounces between feedings. You're going to have to figure out what your storage capacity is. Although when you have a larger breast, it tends to act more like an appendage where gravity impacts it. So those large breasts that are really heavy, they'll often collect milk underneath because gravity is pulling that milk down into the appendage instead of letting it flow back through the limb system or back through the body between feedings. So be mindful when you have a larger breast to do some breast care. Before feedings to get that milk flowing and active, shake your breast, do some breast massage, get that milk flowing and active. Between feedings, if you feel like you're having heavy spots of milk, you actually wanna help move that milk back through your system, all right? So picking the breast up, physically shaking the breast, laying back down or doing inversions like yoga can really help get that fluid moving in all directions. If you're always upright or in the same position all day, that breast is going to naturally pull that milk down and hold it lower in the breast, increasing your chance of plugged ducts from it sitting. So make sure you're lifting that breast up, physically pick the whole breast up, Pretend it's like a bucket that you can dump backwards. Get that milk moving. Milk is a liquid that does not have to just sit there. So get that milk physically moving to help your breast feel better. When you have a larger breast, you are also more prone to plug ducts for that very reason. 
gravity is pulling your milk down. So shaking your breast, massaging in both directions. So before feeding, massage down. After or between feedings, massage back up into the lymph system, up into your armpit, up into your chest. Picking that breast up can help. Also be mindful that straps and pressure can make you more prone to plug ducts, especially with a heavier breast. So if you're used to wearing a lot of support for those girls, make sure a couple times a day you're taking the bra off, take the shirt off, let the girls hang, let them dangle, move them around to try to keep that milk flowing and moving. Also be mindful at night if you're always sleeping on one side, that will put pressure there and it can hold that milk in that place, causing that full heavy feeling or that uncomfortable feeling. So when you wake up, move, get everything moving, get that liquid moving. Big breasts are not a problem for breastfeeding. Breast size does not indicate your milk production and it can be just as beneficial and really good to breastfeed your baby with a large breast. Having a large breast does not mean that you cannot breastfeed. It just means that you're working differently with your baby to take advantage of your anatomy. Now you know.